In the mythology of Marvel Comics, Wolverine is recognized as a champion in defending children, evoking the image of solitary Western heroes with a peculiar code of honor that leads him to act brutally against wrongdoers, while at the same time demonstrating tenderness and protection towards the youngest. Another hero who shows a special care for children is the Hulk, whose emotional connection with the most vulnerable is so deep that he has gained the reputation of patron saint of abused children. In the current narrative, the Wild Hulk leads the journey through the swamps of New Orleans, having by his side a young woman named Charlie. She is a fugitive from the abuses perpetrated by her father and finds in the Emerald Giant a figure of protection and understanding. Her admiration for the most misunderstood member of the Avengers leads her to follow Hulk on this journey of self-discovery and redemption. Bruce Banner finds himself in the sights of the monstrous primordial beings of Earth, manipulated by the Elder in an incessant pursuit of the Hulk, aiming to use him to resurrect the sinister Mother of Horrors. In this epic clash between ancestral forces, Banner is confronted not only with the imminent threat of his pursuers, but also with the ghosts of his past that resurface with each step taken towards the inevitable confrontation. Meanwhile, in a parallel narrative full of tension, Charlie finds herself in a desperate flight from justice, immersed in a whirlwind of conflicting emotions as she deals with the accusations weighing on her for the death of her abusive father. Every step taken by Banner and Charlie is laden with the weight of their own internal battles, as they fight not only for survival, but also for redemption and the hope of a brighter future. In The Incredible Hulk, in the 10th issue, the duo encounters a new and grotesque threat, Nephili, also known as Mother of Angels or Frozen Charlotte. This ancient beast, with its imposing presence and aura of mystery, emerges as yet another formidable challenge for Hulk and Charlie to face on their journey full of dangers and twists. With each step forward, they find themselves confronted not only with the immediate threat that Nephili represents, but also with the enigmas of the past that she brings with her, unraveling long-buried secrets and facing choices that will shape their destinies in unimaginable ways. Nephili is not interested in resurrecting the Mother of Horrors. Her objective on Earth transcends the sinister plans of the Elder. Driven by a deeply rooted personal mission, she is dedicated to eliminating those who pose a threat to others, while seeking to save those who demonstrate kindness, transforming them into miniature statues as a strange act of preservation. This singular purpose puts Nephili in direct conflict with Hulk and Charlie, whose heroic efforts to protect the innocent clash with the dark and relentless methods of the ancient beast. As the confrontation intensifies, secrets will be revealed, loyalties tested, and destinies intertwined in an epic battle between good and evil. These statues, which Nephil refers to as her children, are victims of a cruel curse, condemned to an eternal existence, imprisoned in a state of full consciousness without hope of liberation. It is in this dark and desperate moment that the Hulk enters the scene to rescue the day and assume the role of patron saint of abused children. Driven by an unwavering sense of justice, he not only protects Charlie, his journey companion, but also seeks to bring justice to the children who have been subjugated by the nefarious influence of the Mother of Angels. As his enormous hands rise to defy the cruel fate imposed on the innocent victims, the Hulk becomes a beacon of hope in the midst of darkness, promising a light of redemption for those who need it most. Even before being transformed by the effects of gamma radiation, Bruce Banner had already conceived at least two representations of the Hulk in his mind, the Savage Hulk and the Devil Hulk. These were ways to dissociate himself from the abuse he suffered at the hands of his father. After exposure to gamma radiation, these imaginary manifestations came to life. However, it is important to note that these were not simple, imaginary friends. They were conceived in Banner's mind as psychological defense mechanisms. The emergence of the Devil Hulk was a visceral and powerful response to Bruce Banner's deep-seated and rooted desire for vengeance for the emotional and physical scars inflicted by his father. Its grotesque and sinister appearance, reflecting the image of the devil himself, evoked the dark depths of his deepest fears, which date back to his childhood marked by trauma and pain. This distorted representation of the father figure not only encapsulated Banner's confusion between love and abuse, but also personified the complexity of his own emotions and internal conflicts. Thus, the Devil Hulk was not just a physical manifestation of Banner's anger, but also a painful expression of his ongoing struggle to reconcile his past and find peace within himself. On the other hand, the Savage Hulk represented not only a dissociative defensive response for Bruce, but also an internal refuge where he could protect himself from the cruelties inflicted by his father. As a kind of inner guardian, the Savage Hulk emerged in moments of imminent danger, acting as a barrier between Banner and the outside world. While his father unleashed his fury, Banner withdrew into a state of mental isolation, allowing the Savage Hulk 
to take control and face the abuse in his place. This complex dynamic not only revealed the deep pain and trauma that Banner carried with him, but also highlighted the strength and resilience of his psyche, capable of creating such intricate defense mechanisms to survive the horrors of his past. In other words, Bruce Banner carries within him, to this day, his own versions of abused children, hidden within him and mentally emerging to protect him. These figures, fragmented representations of his own childhood anguish and trauma, are like internal guardians, rising in times of adversity to offer comfort and emotional security. Furthermore, as Banner matures and confronts his own painful past, he realizes that his healing journey is not limited only to himself. By recognizing the suffering of others facing similar situations, he feels an inner calling to act as a defender of the oppressed and a source of hope for those in need. Thus, he not only confronts his own internal demons, but also becomes a symbol of courage and compassion for the needy, fully justifying his nickname of Patron Saint of Abused Children.